International trade takes place on the world's oceans, but the pandemic disrupted it, just as it did most other aspects of our lives. Ships lined up for miles, anchored just off the coast, waiting to bring their cargo into port. This has been a scene throughout the pandemic. Our infrastructure struggling to keep up with pent up demand as people return to shops. Port workers, sailors, and truck drivers unable to work because of public health restrictions or because they're sick themselves. Besides causing delays in getting goods to consumers, the cost of getting them there went through the roof. I'm Jan Carrier Swallow from the International Monetary Fund. And I'm Daniel Jimenez. As those ships set at anchor, the images we all saw raised some questions for us. How can we quantify the impact of rising shipping costs on global inflation, and how persistent are these effects? Before the pandemic, shipping a 40-foot container on a major intercontinental trade route cost around $1,300. But over the course of the pandemic, we've seen that amount go up and up and up to over $10,000. That's a seven-fold increase. Even before this massive increase, we normally spend quite a lot on freight costs. Consider that countries spend on average about 38% of their GDP on importing goods and about 7.5% of that value in shipping them. By studying data for 143 countries over the past 30 years, we found that when those shipping costs double, inflation rises by 0.7 percentage points. Based on the increase in shipping costs we saw in 2021, our research suggests this could increase global inflation by about one and a half percentage point this year. We also investigated the mechanisms between freight costs and what we pay at the cash register. When shipping costs go up, right off the bat, goods that are unloaded from ships cost more at the dock. Within a couple of months, those costs get passed on to local producers who need those items from overseas to make their own stuff at home. But it takes about a year until that increase works its way through supply chains and you finally see the full impact on the retail prices that consumers pay at the store. Take a look at how that compares to other global shocks we are used to worrying about, like oil or food prices. You see that global prices react right away when the price of a barrel of oil goes up and that a spike in global food prices rises inflation for about seven months. Then, that the slow buildup of inflation you get after a rise in shipping costs, which peaks almost a full year later. Now, you may be thinking that these freight costs just go up when the economy is booming, so that freight costs aren't the true culprit for the high inflation. There are many drivers of inflation, and demand can certainly affect the cost of freight. So to make sure that we could isolate the impact of shipping costs on inflation, we studied disruptions in the Suez Canal. About 30% of global container traffic travels through the Suez Canal, and finding an alternate route adds unexpected costs and thousands of miles onto a ship's itinerary. We looked at three recent closures of the canal. Who could forget the most recent episode just last year when the Ever Given container ship blocked the canal for six days? Now, bad weather and navigational errors are truly unfortunate events for the sailors involved. But as economists, we like them for what they're not. They aren't caused by strong demand. Following each of these closures, we saw a significant increase in the Baltic Dry Index, which measures the price paid to transport dry bulk materials across the world's oceans. And over the following year, you guessed it, inflation picked up. Rising shipping costs drive inflation around the world but not all countries are affected equally. Low-income countries are those that tend to pay the highest freight costs and are those who can least afford them. And more remote countries, particularly island states, see much larger impacts. We also find that countries with historically strong monetary policy frameworks see much smaller secondary effects on inflation, with freight costs not triggering higher wages. We can't say exactly when shipping costs will come back down to earth. Some ports seem to be normalizing but the disruptions related to the war in Ukraine 
are straining supply chains further. With shipping costs still running extremely high, the pressure they're putting on global inflation will probably continue to build well into the second half of this year. Our research suggests that even once global shipping fleets have returned to normal, the inflationary effects of freight costs will continue to spread in their wake.